Hello. Welcome everybody to um, the Soul Cafe chat. And uh, thank you for your patience. We had technical difficulties going on today with um, going live, but now we've resolved them or bypassed them. And um, so today, um, well, I'll let the panelists introduce themselves, but today we're gonna be talking about um, religious conflict, like conflict between religions basically, and like how to resolve them and how unionism resolves that conflict between religions. So yeah, and I'll let you guys introduce yourselves. Um, just any, or yeah, Renato, you can start. Hi everyone. Yeah, that was a upset that I had for so long, especially in, in Brazil where I grew up. I, I grew up part of my life my life as Catholic and then I I was Protestant for a few years and there was a big fight in Brazil between Catholic and the Protestant and it's quite similar that happens in Ireland and the UK I mean what happened about 20 years ago but in Brazil I think is more complicated because you see Protestant churches, they fight with um, each other as well. You see, like some of them, they are more conservatives and the other ones, they are more, more liberal. And the conservative ones, they, they say, oh, that Protestant church, uh, those, those people, they go to the hell because the Bible say, says differently. So human has to where like they have to cover their hair um so it's wrong and they accuse people no you're doing wrong this is the devil trying to <laughs> to get you so that was really um it is re really complicated um but yeah in the uk i realized that it's a bit different it's more between countries I think the most the most population in the UK they are more Protestants and the island is more Catholic, and it's it's very silly because it's the same God. It's the same God. People get so attached to we say dogmas, um, just rules that doesn't matter. Uh, people try to to find reasons to be separated um what a, what um united religions is love but ego tries to <laughs> to make people not caring about love but all the things like the external yeah and we we are here to change the reality and cho choose a love and peace. That's nice. Hi everyone, I'm Natalie. Um, I just wish my <laughs> Yanir was here. If he was here, he's very educated on uh, Israeli politics, but I do, he teaches me a lot and um, yeah, like I grew up in the States. He grew up in my twin flame, right? Yanir is my twin flame. Um, he grew up in Israel and now we live in Israel. So yeah, religion is a big topic in our lives. Um, and what, I, what came up for me just now as Renato was speaking was I think um, like a part of it, yes, it's ego and it's separation. I think the other side of it is is there is like a sense of passion that people have when they're like, when they believe in something. And I think that what happens is, you know, if I'm Jewish and I believe in Judaism and I'm passionate about it, if somebody else comes and talks about their religion, it feels like it's threatening, you know, my truth. Um, and I've had this, like, I've had arguments uh, with Yanir's like sisters and because I come from the standpoint of unionism and they come from the Jewish, um, like really religious 
perspective. Um, but yeah, when, whenever, you know, it, it boils down to the truth is that, yeah, like underneath underlying um, every human and their beliefs is just a desire to, to love and connect and be loved. And I think uh, a big thing for me is learning how to respect um, that not everybody is going to agree with me or see the see the world the way I see it at this time. Um, and I think like respect is a big is a big thing that needs to be um, strengthened because we don't all have to um, you know believe in the same religion, but we do have to respect each other and and um, you know, just just as I would want somebody to respect my beliefs, I, I should respect others as well. Yeah. It's, yeah, I agree with that. Mm. Uh, I'm Revti and um, I live in India and I'm a Hindu. Um, but what I see, um, just now when Sage asked us to introduce ourselves and I had to keep my um, my mic unmute, uh, muted because there was like loud uh, knocking sound and it was like a symbol like a symbol for um, every time we get to introduce ourselves uh, as per our religion, like when I identify myself with my religion, there is some sort of, um, especially in my country, there's, uh, there's judgment and you, you immediately um, make this image uh, formed in your mind that, uh, okay, if you're a Hindu, you're here. And if you're a Muslim, you're here. Um, and um, something I have been healing uh, is that uh, that it's about God that lives in the heart and not so much about the external. So um, like what I'm experiencing is my neighbors, they changed. So it's been like 10 months that a Muslim family is living near uh, my house. And it's so like the perception of a different religion's family living next to you is perceived so separate from you. And like suddenly like they're an alien or like this new species and they're viewed like that. And um, spending time with this family makes me realize that they're, there's literally no difference. They're the same. Their family is the same. Their heart is the same. And it's like, um, so I just wanted to sh search online um, about what Yogananda's view on religion was. And um, what she shared was about like, religion is nothing but self-realization is the highest religion. So, and all religions, um, teach this and you don't um, people uh, who associate with the religion can believe in God but it's not necessary that they love God through their heart and there's like this is like a um, thing I had to you know I saw um, and yeah like not a uh, Yogananda said that uh, not a thousand Jesuses can help um, you until you make the choice to love God yourself and actually build your own relationship with yourself. So that was very helpful, and it feels very yeah like there's a lot of uh, conflict here uh, with Hindu and Muslim. It's been like, it's been old, it's been for years and it's nice that we get to heal this. Like finally, and there's no separation between. They're, they're, it's the same heart. Like um, the God that I feel when I read Bhagavad Gita is the same God I feel when I read the Quran. And it's not like, the feeling is still the same. So yeah, that makes me feel happy. 
Yeah, and um, it's cool that you read you read the Quran too, like read other religious texts, <clears throat> because like that that's just that's cool, you know. It's open minded, and <clears throat> I'm sage by the way. And from my background um, in the U.S., you know, the U.S. is a bit the U.S. is multicultural, but um, Sometimes Americans can be a little bit obtuse or they don't, you know, just they don't look into other religions too much. Um, and I was really interested in religious studies as a child, but I was like an agnostic and I didn't really have religion, though Christianity was all around me. And so for me, I saw religious conflict in terms of like between atheists or agnostic people, like people who didn't believe in God or religion, and then like Christians, you know what I mean? So I saw, I experienced a lot of that and I was part of that too in like my own family, you know? Because my dad was like an agnostic or maybe an atheist and my mom was Christian. And so there was a religious conflict like in my house. And so I grew up with that and it was interesting and I, um, you know, eventually sided with my dad because I didn't like the version of Christianity I was presented, you know, where God was punishing and uh, he was punishing and stuff. And there was moral judgment about like LGBT people and stuff like that. So, but that was my experience of it. Um, besides just observing like, you know, in the United States too, I mean, there's more tolerance growing and people are getting more culturally sensitive and stuff but also the other thing I would observe too is just you know like people having prejudice against like other religions and stuff like that which exist in the U.S. you know but um I think yeah, I feel like unionism has brought a lot of healing to me in terms of just like being okay with people you know being religious or having this position or saying this thing or it doesn't hurt me or affect me you know so yeah, and, um, and also having a relationship with God that I care about instead of having it like forced on me, you know, with Christianity in the past. <clears throat> so that's my experience with religious conflict and a little bit about resolving it. So yeah, and if any of you wants to, wants to talk more about it in your life or, um, yeah, even if we're called to do like some healing about it or something like that, that would also be wonderful for everyone to see. So, yeah. Yeah, I think it's really good. We enjoy this moment here to heal ourselves, to heal the collective. The, I, think, I think we need to heal this pattern of being wrong or being right. I think that's the core thing. Everyone wants to prove to others that, no, my point of view is the right. Yours is wrong. Um, and just connect to love. Yeah, I agree. This is actually, um, this comes up a lot in, in, you know, this work of, like, do you want to be right or do you want to experience peace? And that's really what it comes down to. Um, and I, I've noticed even with, with, you know, being like a messenger of this work, right, like unionism and the mare exercise and loving yourself and twin flames and stuff, I also have to make sure that I'm not like, you know, forcing it or convincing someone or like, I, I also still feel like I have that a little bit in my energy of like, no, but this is the truth, like you have to understand and you know, like not everybody's there yet. Not everybody's open to it. Not everybody's choosing it at this time. And it's really important to just choose peace and to spread the message like with God um, from a place of peace and love and not from a place of ego or trying to be right. So yeah, I completely agree with Renato about um, just, yeah, just giving ourselves peace in this place where we are, it's, it's a lack of confidence or something. And then because of it, we're trying to like, you know, prove something. But um, yeah, we don't need to prove anything. We just need to love ourselves. And it's such a energy leaking when you try to prove something to all other people. And 
love is so much yeah. easier peace is so much easier we we don't need to you know to leak our energy or try to convince people it, it, it happens um it works for everything in your, in your life yeah i feel the healing and the healing here is just to know that um the peace in your heart is enough you know like you don't need you don't need other people's validation you know if, other, if someone else doesn't agree with you that's not taking anything from you you know because the truth in your the truth in your heart and the peace in your heart you know because sometimes people can be like no nah, this is my truth but they're so angry about it but if you're at peace in your heart then yeah that should be a good that should be enough it is enough yeah so what came up for me um the when unionism was introduced i like i felt that same pressure like i'm obligated and i'm going to receive the same level of religion tag that i have already and um, i was resistant before to i to um, associate myself as a unionist and i feel like it comes from um feeling that religion has some sort of control over you and my life and my choices um and um yeah like um there was a moment where it actually felt like oh i'm allowed to like other religious texts or i'm allowed to like um other prophets or um, the bible and like what is being said there uh because people can be um, people will like i was afraid of how i'm viewed for my choices of freedom so it's like the society is going to judge me if i love more than my religion um so that's what came up for me like um yeah i guess just i choose to unconditionally accept myself uh and that it's god uh who i am loving in these forms and it's just one god and yeah 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 and also that it's, it's love like it's the energy mm-hmm. that's like underneath the text not you know um so like when something resonates it doesn't really matter where it, you know what religion it's from it just matters that it feels good in your heart and I think another thing that came up for me was um also making the choice to let go of um illusions and things that don't serve us anymore and I you know how like sometimes something um feels right and then like you know time goes by and then you realize like oh I don't resonate with that anymore I think there might be a block with that because people are so stubborn and like you know keeping their truth of what they think is the truth and that's why there's a lot of conflict because like for instance in my specific uh reality a lot of the things that um i hear like your nearest family saying they're uh religious jews i'm just like how could how could they even think that right like it's clearly like based on separation and so i i guess what they're marrying to me is like they're holding on to an illusion because they think it's serving them but really it's not and so it's safe to like let go of things that we thought one like that once we thought served us now don't serve us anymore just go deeper into the truth deeper into love like the Jews think they're the chosen ones and <laughs> so i argue with them a lot about that i'm like no we're all the chosen ones you know and they really like believe it and um yeah and it, it yeah <laughs> yeah so like, letting go of that hmm yeah like what you shared uh what comes up is in india people have a lot of spiritual arrogance that um it's a very superior uh like a religion and you have a superior um in spirituality 
and so you have some sort of authority uh, and people go around you know stating their truths in their own way and i feel like even the root of any conflict would be this arrogance and it's like it's ego itself right so yeah saying no to ego and no to arrogance that we're equal like when if it looks different on the outside we are yeah it's same something that came up to me um because after when i became teenager i started to get to know all the religions because i was feeling a bit lost um and i was studying all the religions and the only thing that i found in common was love the only thing and exactly love that pe that people don't don't surrender you know in, the, in this world and for so long i had this resistant resistance of saying the word god because it was remind me when i was you know going to the church um i don't have good memories about the going to the church that time but i think it was jeff and shalia they said once that you can call god how feels peaceful for you you can call god as the divine as the universe or love and i was thinking people get so attached to these labels but if you if you call as love it's it's easy i think it's easier to understand what god is yeah like um what you shared uh feels like we're just following the good feeling and and that's enough yeah. and it's like um you know in divine dish when um you cook non vegetarian food and if people who are vegetarian they turn to liking non vegetarian food there's like a feeling like yo you're you you're accepted in you're allowed to follow that good feeling so it it felt the same for me um cuz uh, as a child like i even if i'm from a hindu family my schooling was a christian like a uh christian school so i was around like i'm used to listening to the bible i'm used to listening to that language of the christ so it's like that's um so i felt like i'm a bad person for not knowing my own religion enough so and then like as i went along in my life it's like i then i got introduced to islam and then that and i love uh, reading you know little quotes from the quran and um there again it's like when my parents found out that i'm liking this they're like you're not a what are you doing like you're you're committing a sin sort of thing and that's the like that's the energy that people have here and i feel like we are healing this like we are uh when i show them the truth like and i i i feel like it's the same what natalie said like she's like trying to convince um, the truth to people like your own good feeling to someone else um i feel like the love in you and the peace you feel in following that will speak for itself and it feels like it it's enough like that peace is enough yeah i also want to add what came up as you were speaking was um the whole thing the whole topic of loving unconditionally like i feel like that's what this is about and um you know loving people where they're at loving people no matter what they religion they choose to believe in um and of course being an example and showing them the way but not with force and not with um arrogance but just with peace and love and just being an example um but i do feel that a lot of religions that like 
people, well, people in general that um, sort of get defensive or, or like even um, uh, like, you know, attacking or, um, you know, anything that's like warlike, it, it does stem from a place of like, they don't feel loved. Um, they don't feel loved unconditionally because, you know, they're not loving themselves unconditionally, but I do feel that um, that's our biggest test is like, God is like always asking us to love his children unconditionally. And it's like, it's loving even when it isn't comfortable to love. Like, even when the person has a completely different opinion than you or is even treating you not the best or whatever, like, are you going to still love that person? Are you going to still love, you know, a child of God? I think that's what it boils down to is just loving unconditionally and having compassion because, you know, we're um, changing the world and it's a big deal. <laughs> so compassion and patience, I think is a big one for me. Thank you for sharing that. I, that's very healing for me to hear. Um, yeah. It's like, a, it's like not judging someone else for their upset. It's like equal to that. It's like if someone else has different sets of upsets, you don't like dismiss their truth in, yeah. Feels good to have compassion and acceptance. Yeah, I had um, experiences of shit, mainly, yeah, mainly, mainly of like talking to people about unionism um, that were like a lot of different ones, you know what I mean? That like ran the gamut from, um, you know, more of like a, like it, it felt there's a lot of conflict versus like a much more peaceful and open and humble. Um, I got a lot of experience with that. Um, well, a fair amount of experience when I was um, driving for Lyft and for Uber, you know, the like the ride sharing service. And sometimes people would just like talk about religion, you know, and then these people would come up to help me heal these upsets, you know. And yeah, I had this one man and um, his wife or his girlfriend were there um, as well. And, um, you know, he was, I don't know what, I don't know how we got to the topic, but he was just talking to me about, um, I don't know, we were just talking, ended up talking about unionism, or at the time it wasn't called unionism, um, so I was talking about, like, just um, Jeff and Shalia and their work and everything, you know, and that was an example of, like, like, I was healing through it as I went and everything like that, but I was feeling very, like, defensive because, I manifested this guy who was very, um, I would share the things and he was really up in arms about it. And, you know, about a lot of things about unionism. And I realized from that experience that like, it's, you have to share in a compassionate way, you know, and in a way that feels like really peaceful and like sufficiently gentle for people because you know, that's, that's what's loving to do. And if, if, if you don't, if you try to share too much or something or like, um, you know, just over, oh, you know, like overshare someone or you're not it's like humble about it, then it's too much for somebody, you know, and it's not compassionate. And, you know, they could be open to it if it was presented like, you know, in a more, you know, keyed down way, you know, so I had that, ex I had that experience and this guy was, I don't know what his beliefs were, but he, he, uh, he didn't really, he just talked to me mainly about like atheism and stuff, atheist type things like about God existing or not. But later I had, I had healed a lot, like several months later, I had a conversation with a Mormon person, which where I'm from um, in Arizona, there are a lot of Mormon people. And I grew up with a lot of Mormon friends and there was a lot of controversy between Mormons and non-Mormons who Mormons were 
Jet, there's a, sometimes a judgment that existed about Mormons being weird or you know controlling, which everyone's different. It really varies how people practice their religion. But um, so I had a conversation with this guy, and I was able to share from a place that was a lot more peaceful. There's still some feelings like, oh my god, like it's feels scary to be vulnerable, but healing through that. And we were able to connect and I was able to listen to what he had to say and feel like, wow, like Mormonism has a really unique piece, you know, for people. And unionism unites our religions, of course, but I could feel how Mormonism was so divine in a way I never had before. And this work and healing the arrogance or the defensiveness or the validation upset is what allowed me to be able to listen to this guy and be like, wow, there's a lot of divinity in Mormonism and I'm interested in hearing more about it and we can share back and forth. And I was, I was pleased because I feel like this guy reflected that healing of the humility and the self-confidence because he was really open to hearing about unionism. He was open to hearing about me being transgender and my journey of healing and my twin flame journey. So it was a really beautiful experience, you know, that we were, I was allowed to have because, you know, I was taught, Jeff and Shalia taught me how to work through all these upsets. So I don't have to spend my whole life feeling defensive or closed off, especially to like potential, potentially judgmental religious groups or whatever, you know, like anyone could be tolerant to anyone could be kind and open, you know, it doesn't matter. Your, if your allegiance is to love <laughs> and not to like an organization in particular. Yeah. So, yeah, that was yeah. my experience. Yeah, when you spoke about the organizations, like religious organizations, this thing happens a lot in India where uh, they just show up if you're like interreligious in some way, maybe someone's married to some other person, some other religions. Um, uh, and uh, they just show up. So there's like uh, upsets about attack that you'll be attacked if you uh, accept some other different religion than yours. I, yeah, like I agree that uh, it's so relieving that you can like we are allowed to heal this with the teachings and yeah it's like um I think she's frozen right or is it just me yeah I've seen her video frozen I think this is a good opportunity to bring up the that attack is not real and that um, that's how I think religious conflicts, you know, will end is when everybody, you know, when we heal that, like at the core, like the illusion of attack. And back to you, Ravati. <laughs> Can you hear me? <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I guess I got cut off. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you're back. Yeah. No, don't worry. It's okay. And um, we can, we, you know, if, if we're guided, if we're guided to, too, we could like heal around this as well, you know, or something like the, yeah. Like the feeling of like, I don't know, being being cut off or having, I don't know, having what you, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like this happens a lot in communicating and talking about like religion, like people, you know, feeling like you can't, <laughs> you can't talk to me about this, you know, or something like that. I don't know. Are, are you open to that, Ray Fee, or what do you, what would you prefer to do? Yeah, I'm open to that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so um, 
good. So we can surrender to that, like collective healing. Feels good to me. Okay, so yeah, how does your how does your heart feel right now? What's coming up in your heart? Yeah, I get um, fear of being controlled and attacked. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm choosing differently than. Yeah. Right. What do you, oh, there we go, we got a hump. What do you receive from letting go of control and attack? Love and peace. Mm -hmm. Acceptance. Yeah. yeah, do you choose, do you choose um, a life of love and peace and acceptance? Hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I feel peaceful. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and what is there what else is coming up or is there any other feeling that's coming up in the Yeah, it's like um it's like if I choose differently a different religion that um I need approval from the society, my parents, and it's like this age old like ancestral kind of thing. Um, that we somehow need approval mm -hmm. of them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, tradition, tradition has its merits, but like mm. tradition has its merits and it's really, can be really grounding and helpful for a society. But do you have to, um, do you have to, um, except like someone else giving you validation or can you receive validation from God in your heart within? Mm. Yeah, that feels better to, to have like discernment in traditions. Yeah, feels good to move on to more expansion, yeah. 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 Do you feel, do you feel validated? Like when you go into your heart, do you feel like validated and that it's an, you feel like it's enough to make you feel comfortable? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. Peace is enough. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I feel good. <laughs> good. Does that feel complete? Yeah, it does. It does feel good. Complete. Good. Good. Thank you for thank you for your vulnerability. I'm sure that's well. I know it's really healing for the world and everyone who would see this. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Big deal. Yeah. You, no, you're welcome. Yeah, and just. Let your let that part of yourself just you know melt into you and just just hug her you know and you can mm -hmm. just give her whatever um, closure completion that she needs you know yeah <sighs> that's good.
Yeah, and I choose to I choose to allow that to just be integrated in me and like a part of me. Grounded in me. I just in the uh, end. I'm not... yeah. oh, <laughs> you go ahead. Go. You go. go. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um. In the end, what came up for me is like, um, that this is real. Like unionism is real, and like oneness is real. And it's not this, this dream that can never be achieved. Um. And it feels good, like we're, yeah, it's like already a, a reality. Yeah. Yeah, that there's already, there's already one love and there's already just one, um, one God or one, well, yeah, one, di one divine source, I would say. <laughs> But we just, yeah, we say God, but yeah, you can call him however you want. And yeah, it's really peaceful. I mean, I feel like it, it's only logical that unionism would arise because the one religion would kind of like unite them or all the religions would unite because we all know that. And all these people have been saying that for years, like culturally it's become so common to understand that you know love is the common denominator between religions and i feel like consciousness in the world has been preparing for this has been preparing for this for a long time <laughs> you know and working through all their stuff and all their conflict inside and now we get to have unionism and we get to have peace in religion thank god you know so, and that means a lot for all of the peoples and places that each of us is associated with and all of our viewers. So I feel like there's no place that doesn't have some level of conflict religiously, you know, that we can't resolve and bring healing and love to. And fortunately, all we need to do is change ourselves and be the embodiment of this peace and share it. So we don't have to convert people, knock on their doors. No judgment if you do. It can be very healing. So, yeah. Yeah, Jeff had a lot of, um, Jeff had, um, I remember he shared in TFAS, I think it was TFAS, or an experience of like a Jehovah's Witness knocking his door. And they had a conversation about the kingdom of heaven. And that was how God had Jeff um, receive the revelation about the kingdom of heaven on earth, like the system of government based actually based on God or based on love. And it was because of that. And, you know, granted the Jehovah's Witness uh, representatives weren't keen on having a discussion with him. They were just keen on like telling him what it was, but still that was God's inspiration through them. And it was good. And it just reminds me of something that you guys said earlier. I don't remember what it was. Oh, 
Um, Jeff brought up this week that some religions, it was essential for them to have the belief that they were the one and only religion in order for them to survive and exist. And they have been able to spread a lot of good. It's undeniable, but you know, it's, it's, I think it's important to focus on that goodness and know that God's plan doesn't get trumped by any act of violence or any, anything that is not aligned with love. Like they also mentioned, Jeff actually also mentioned that with Christianity, that like the guilt surrounding Jesus's crucifixion and the, how some of the apostles felt who like didn't show up when Jesus was crucified, which was a huge feeling for them was a lot of what drove Christianity to, to spread. But even if they felt that way and had that upset, God still used it to spread the religion. And it did, and it did a lot of good. And spread, you know, the core of Christianity is very loving. So all of that guilt, that guilt shit that's like smeared over it, God doesn't even see, you know, and if we don't have to give our power over to that, you know, and that makes the religion a lot more appealing. Anyway, that's what that brought up for me. Yeah. I wanted to add that, um, yeah, I remember Jeff saying, Jeff and Shalia were talking about this in one of the TFAS classes where. Um, oh, Natalie, you, you muted. I think you hit the mute button. There you go. Me? Yeah. Okay, sorry. Uh, the way to stop a war is to stop fighting. That was the. So um, that brings me to feel into like the way the way to stop war mm -hmm. is to stop fighting, which means, you know, each uh, child of God needs to stop fighting with themselves and then. Oh, yeah. So you, you need it again. Okay, now you're good. Hmm. I feel like, yeah, and I feel like that that is like a representation of the block too, of like the inner fighting or conflict. But you can, if you can. If you can get unmuted though, it would be wonderful to hear that and like talk about it, but it's like, or if anyone wants to, if Natalie, you can't um, unmute, um, if anyone wants to like talk about that, you know? Oh, about the, the inner conflict? Yeah, or whatever else, whatever you're going to say. Yeah, it's just like a, a battle between like, we always have two choices, right? Fear or love. Um, and that's, it's really simple. And it's just about like choosing love and, and choosing love consistently. Um, and even if like fear comes up, like it's just about like not choosing fear and, and choosing love instead. Um, oh. You got muted again. Oh, Natalie, you're mute. You muted again. No need to fight with ourselves. No need to choose fear. No need to choose ego. Um. Yeah, just make a new choice that. Because I think a lot of the issue is like, just like people, um, you know, everyone wants to choose love and everyone, you know, wants to love. But I think we get caught up sometimes in. Yeah. Sorry, you got muted again. It's a thing. It's, a, it's, a, it's perhaps an upset. Ravthi, do you want to share? Yeah. Like, I was wondering if she wanted to work on that because it feels like your voice wants to 
like your no, voice it's can my twin, be silent. it's my twin flame calling me because I have to go to uh, Rosh Hashanah dinner, which is a Jewish holiday. And um, yeah, so <laughs> he's calling me. He's like, where are you? Um, mm. Yeah. That's perfect. So yeah. Um, yeah. Just love ourselves there. Like, it's just about, yeah, it's just about stop fighting with yourselves and just choose love. Yeah. Like, don't sit in that conflict of fear, love, fear, love, fear, love, and just make a new choice to choose love, like, in a more, um, like, a quicker and, like, a more assertive and, like, consistent way, rather than, you know, drag out the upset, drag out, like, sitting in fear. Um, I feel like people don't think it's possible, and it feels, like, too easy, but honestly, like, it's, it's, it's that easy, and it's that simple, and just choose for our journeys to be easy and light and simple and and just yeah and yeah yeah it's just letting go of the resistance to surrender to love I feel like um what's like um, happening with Natalie is like a perfect example of like your tradition is calling you and that <laughs> it's okay for us to have compassion yeah. when we're like healing this. It, it's a big deal. It's a very large thing. So it, it's like, yeah, we can have compassion for ourselves um, as we heal. Yeah, that's, it's beautiful. And yeah, I mean, it's the Rosh Hashanah dinner with, your twin flame's family and you're just you're preparing to get married to your twin flame and it's beautiful so what i felt in my heart come up was the conflict isn't real like there is no conflict like <laughs> it's it was perfect like him calling you like it brought up this discussion um he loves you he wants you to come with him and um literally religion is interrupting our religious discussion but I don't, it's like no interruption, it's funny. And it's good, it's a good thing. You know, it's like, there's harmony between unionism and, you know, what Unir is like calling Natalie to do, or what God through Unir. Plus, it's the end of the hour. So it, everything is in harmony here, but. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. Yay. Sorry about that, yeah. yeah. That feels so good, so good. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for this. It was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you for showing up for this. It was your contribution is beautiful. Yeah. Thank you guys. Even when we uh, get cut off, it's an opportunity to heal. Yeah. And just, um, yeah, just letting go of the, the illusion that like love can be stopped or that it can be cut off, you know? not true yeah I feel like that was the I feel like that was the core healing honestly with that yeah yeah so. yeah very healing yeah huh. well that feels good oh bye natalie have a good time at the dinner bye everyone thank you bye 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 yeah Yeah, and um, yeah, I was just feeling that. Yeah, just that. Yeah, well, I guess what we're hearing is that yeah, there's no, there is no, con there is no conflict in love, and there's no conflict between religions, and it's just, it's an illusion. 
you know, it's not, it's not real, but it's something people create the experience of and perceive. Yeah. yeah, and many things, if you see, you know, the history, religions was used to control countries, control politics, especially in the medieval era, medieval times. And I think the control is always a pattern that we are, we are healing with the unionism. It has been more evident. We have been healing for a while, but I think now it has been more powerful with this spiritual awakening that it's happening in the planet. feels very I feel very grounded and very peaceful in knowing that it's all an illusion uh, yeah I like the silence yeah yeah me too yeah it's very yeah, we're all make we're all we're all doing something really important for all of our communities by healing this and you know take it by healing this inside of ourselves. You know, even if you think that it doesn't, I don't know. Even if you might think it doesn't make a difference, that's not true because everyone is significant, and your healing can cause ripple effects, it, do, it does cause ripple effects that are like beyond your understanding. So you just have to let go of that control and just see where the healing takes you and all of us. Ah, that feels good. So yeah. Yeah, I feel complete too. Yeah, yeah I feel complete too. Uh, thank you so much, you guys, for this healing. Oh, yeah. Oh, was <laughs> my phone? It was like, "Hey Siri," but I didn't say "Hey Siri." Anyway, <laughs> I was going, yeah, I think it's just God's God saying like that He's here and you're welcome. Anyway, or yeah. So, well, thank you very much. Yeah, for you guys too, and like what you shared and yeah for your healing thank you Ray for opening up and thank you you're welcome yeah and sharing some healing with everybody and so yeah we'll be back next week um and yeah we will you know let you know um that we will be when we'll be coming back and um we'll continue this discussion and we'll see where it goes and like see where the flow takes us in like healing separation between religions. So yeah, thank you guys. We'll see you later. And thank you, Renato and Rafi. Thank, thank you. you guys. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye bye.